Pigeons touch our lives in many ways and humans have some interesting, bizarre, and even provocative thoughts about these birds. These feelings, the human relationship with them and attitudes are expressed in the most eclectic range of pigeon quotes. You have to accept the fact that sometimes you are the pigeon, and sometimes you are the statue. I don't understand why people would want to get rid of pigeons. They don't bother no one. A homing pigeon must love her home, otherwise she will not wish to return to it. I have been feeding pigeons, thousands of them for years. But there was one, a beautiful bird, pure white with light gray tips on its wings, that one was different. It was a female. I had only to wish and call her and she would come flying to me. I loved that pigeon as a man loves a woman, and she loved me. As long as I had her, there was a purpose to my life. Pigeons are among the most maligned urban wildlife despite the fact that human beings brought them to our shores and turned them loose in our cities, not something that they chose. The only difference between a pigeon and the American farmer today is that a pigeon can still make a deposit on a John Deere. Bah, tombstones are only good for pigeons to sit on. All I know of birds to this date is that sparrows are the ones that are not pigeons. I looked in the mirror at my pigeon chest, I had to put my clothes on cause it made me depressed. Don't be afraid of being outnumbered. Eagles fly alone. Pigeons flock together. Eagles don't fly with pigeons. The pigeon bites only the hand that feeds him. Pigeons are among the very few birds that can suck water while their head is down. You can watch actors create their illusions, but if you don't see where they get the pigeons from, you don't really know how they're doing it. The English eat all sorts of birds, pigeons, ducks, sparrows, but if you tell them you eat puffin, you might as well come from Mars. And then one day she left me. She left me as the pigeon leaves the window to fly in the wide blue sky. I'm not an early bird or a night owl, I'm a permanently exhausted pigeon. When I ache to live, my mind loves to stay with the peaceful whiteness of a pigeon's care that I end boundless amity. It always seemed to me a sort of clever stupidity only to have one sort of talent, like a carrier pigeon. I only speak a little pigeon French. Just enough to get by with the little French pigeons. I'd paint long strips of canvas and abandon them on the beach, or put bread out in geometric patterns for the pigeons downtown. I wanted people to find something nice and intriguing to puzzle over. Then I'd go back to see if the things were still there, or if anyone would notice. Pigeons are among the most maligned urban wildlife despite the fact that human beings brought them to our shores and turned them loose in our cities, not something that they chose. I don't eat animals. I rescue strays and take injured pigeons to the wildlife rehab. 
I carry spiders and wasps outside in a cup covered with a 3 by 5 card. It would only follow that I'd take pause when contemplating the abrupt and apparently brutal ending of a tiny human being's life, or even a potential human being's life. When I was a boy, I had a baseball team of my own. We played on a vacant lot between 90th and 92nd streets. I had a little menagerie of my own, some pigeons, guinea pigs, and so on. On Saturday mornings, I had to take my music lesson. Then the members of my team used to come see my menagerie. But charity is a very complicated thing. It's important to find an area where you can really help and you can feel the results. Charity is not like feeding pigeons in the square. It is a process that requires professional management. When I was eight or nine, I came to London for the day from Swindon and went to the National Gallery. I remember standing in Trafalgar Square with my best friend Tim, who was covered in pigeons because I put bird seed on his head. I love the pigeons. I just raise them, period, and feed them. Pigeons go away, and they always come back. You get a touch of freedom, and then they are free to come back to you. I love the idea of pigeons. Pigeon had been overbearing from the start, but it had always been a welcome balance to her father's disinterest, and Zoe had never before wished for a separate existence from her. But something had shifted, just slightly, in her relationship with her bird since she'd arrived on Mallow Island. Coming here was the last break from the only world she'd ever known, and only Pigeon was left. She was a childhood relic like a stuffed animal or a security blanket, and Zoe didn't want to say goodbye to her. Where would she go? Would she ever mean as much to someone else as she did to Zoe? But nor did Zoe know how to fit her into this life she had to forge on her own. We have always had a curious connection to birds in my family. My grandfather was even called the Birdman of Havana because he kept pigeons. He named them after family members long since gone. I spent my childhood believing the birds were actually these people, simply transformed. I remember the musty, sweet scent of them. I remember the bloom of dust on their wings. My favorite was the one named after my mother. When my grandfather died, my brother set the birds free and I hated seeing them fly away. I did not want them to leave me, as nearly everyone I had ever loved had left me. But my brother said we were free like them now, and we left to cross the straits that very night. When the mood strikes to do your own thing, it's time to go pigeon, I never understood why you love pigeons so much, but your face when you see them is priceless. The pigeon is our friendly, faithful friend. They'll sit on your shoulder, steal your food and watch with you at the window, the best things in life are free. And pigeons, just a few words from the pigeon, six feet high, six feet wide. Oh no, wait that that's a tree. One morning I woke up and found my favorite pigeon, Julius, had died I was devastated and was gonna use his crate as my stickball bat to honor him. I left the crate on my stoop and went in to get something and I returned to see the sanitation man put the crate into the crusher. I rushed him and caught him flush on the temple with a titanic right hand he was out cold, convulsing on the floor like an infantile retard.
Anyone who clings to the historically untrue and thoroughly immoral doctrine that violence never settles anything I would advise to conjure the ghosts of Napoleon Bonaparte and the Duke of Wellington and let them debate it. The ghost of Hitler could referee, and the jury might well be the dodo, the great auk and the passenger pigeon. Violence, naked force, has settled more issues in history than has any other factor, and the contrary opinion is wishful thinking at its worst. Breeds that. Forget this basic truth have always paid for it with their lives and freedom.